Hello students, welcome to Data Structures and Algorithms Unit 1, Lecture 4. In this series of lectures, we will be seeing the need for algorithm description language followed by Sparks and algorithm description language. Then we will be seeing how Sparks is executed on a machine. At last, we will be discussing the different statements in Sparks. In this particular lecture, we will be discussing, we will be covering only need for algorithm description language, Sparks introduction and how Sparks can be executed on a machine. Come on, let's start. Now, algorithm description language is very much needed because this is how an algorithm is going to be described. Although we do have so many programming languages like C, C++, Java, we cannot use them to describe an algorithm. Why should we not use them? Okay, there are three main reasons. The first reason is you, are, you will be restricted to the syntax and semantics of a single language. Okay, and already the language provides so many facilities and functionalities which we need to develop from scratch okay the third and last reason is each language has its own followers and detractors we do need all people to use our algorithm description language and they need to use a common language whichever language they are going to follow so this is the these are the three main reasons why we do not use a programming language for algorithm description coming to the execution of sparks on a machine any Sparks program can be easily translated to a program in a particular language. So how can this be done? This can be done using a preprocessor or a hand translation also. So it is very easy for you to translate by hand a Sparks program into a C program, a Sparks program into a C++ program, a Sparks program into a Java code. So this is easy by hand translation. It can also be done by a machine or a preprocessor. After that, this can be fed into a compiler for the language and then it can be con then it can be converted into a machine code. This is how the execution of Spark takes place on a machine. How did this name come by? This name just appeared one day all of a sudden. It was not actually named after an acronym but then our computer next had named it after an acronym later on. So what are these two names or acronyms associated with Sparks? The first one is structured programming, a reasonably complete set. Okay. The second acronym associated is smart programmers are required to know Sparks. So this is the how the name of Sparks arrived. So what is Sparks and why is it used? So Sparks can, uh, what are the different abilities of Sparks? So it can be used to manipulate numbers, Boolean values and characters. Okay, so what are the different statements that Sparks can give us? Sparks provides us with many conditional testing statements, iteration statements, input output statements, etc. Several such statements can now be combined into a single line. How to combine statements into a single line? We can just combine them using a semicolon as a separator. This is how we do it in C programming also, right? Now expressions can also be arithmetic, boolean or of character type in Sparks. With this very small introduction, let us begin our algorithms using Sparks. The coming up in the next lecture, we will be discussing more about the Sparks syntax and statements in detail. Thank you students.